All right, ask Reddit thread. What's a simple thing, but if someone asked you, you wouldn't be able to explain it to them? Colors. As Ray Charles once said, damn your pussy smells like shit. That's my asshole, Ray. <laughs> Why did Ray Charles say that when he was handed a cheese grater? This is the most violent thing I've ever read. <laughs> I've always been fascinated by synesthesia, specifically chromesthesia. To be able to hear a color would be quite interesting to explain to someone. It's a fucking plague, honestly, hearing colors. Like, my girlfriend knows and always asks me what color songs are. And then asks me why certain songs are certain colors. Women, uh... I don't know. Get out of my head. What an orgasm feels like to someone who has never had one. Like I sneeze, but in private. All of your orgasms have been in private. Except the time I masturbate on the plane. Not safe for work. Similar to their air hostesses. Yeah, I'm not going to click on any of those. Uh, gravity. Having a vote just to confuse you. I've always explained it as a fabric of space-time becoming a memory faux mattress. If you put an object with significant mass in the center of a mattress, then the surface will deform, and objects with significantly lesser mass on the surface will roll slash collapse gravitate towards that object. If they are close enough to be affected by the deformation of the memory foam surface, introduce another object with significantly larger mass, and the balance will shift, and everything will start to roll towards the new deformation. So basically, on a planetary scale, the sun could be equivalent of a bowling ball, which will create large deformations in the surface of the mattress space-time, while the Earth and other planets are closer to baseball slash marbles. Of course, reality is considerably more complex than that, and whole books can be written on that subject. That is my two cents. Well, I mean, if the sun was a, a bowling ball, the other planets would be like grains of sand. Marbles are a little bit too big in that comparison. What is what it is exactly that humans like so much about music? It's really just noises, but for no reason particular. It's so much more than one so much more than that when the noises are longer and move up and down. Music is a series of patterns and our brains really like patterns. Specifically, they like to be able to anticipate the next part of the pattern. It's crazy how humans seem to be instinctively attracted to music. My son is eight months old, and he already dances, kind of bounces to music from his toys or on the radio. But he was never taught to dance or anything. Huh. Huh, huh, huh. It makes us feel something. Energy. It's a pretty simple concept at its core, but it's still kind of weird that you can convert speed into heat. And with a hot red branding iron, I can convert heat into speed. <laughs> Energy is the currency of nature. You want to do something, you gotta pay. Pay what? Energy. That's a good way to put it, I guess. Electricity. Imagine you have a mountain. Your mountain has two lakes, one at the top and one at the bottom. This is your battery. Ever heard of gravitational energy? E equals mgh. That's... this just looks like a lot of math. Boo. Sarcasm. It's when you say the opposite of what you mean in an attempt to be funny. <laughs> in a hundred years when I finally die, I only hope I go to hell so I can kill you all over again. Bethesda Game Studios idea of sarcasm, taken from Fallout 4. Being too lazy to go to sleep. Huh? <laughs> you never been on your computer? Shalol and felt tired but we're too lazy to get in bed and or close your computer no many times my friend no is this the thing people do I don't know I need to find a second person before I can say that edit it turns out I'm not third I do it regularly in addition when I do finally go to bed I'm wide awake again fourth and same going to bed makes me wide awake so I end up browsing right on my phone hmm I guess that's the thing people do I never knew that. What about too depressed and distracted? I'm going to fix. I'm going to bed at 6 a.m. frequently, and it gets longer and longer. Uh, see, for me, I really like sleep. It's just going to bed too early that I can't really do. 
but I never have the thing like, ugh, I'm so lazy I don't want to go to bed. No, it's like, ooh, I get to go to bed now and end the day and go to sleep because sleep is the best. How does one get good? Step one, quit camping, noob. Step two, unequip that fucking rocket launcher. Step three, woman. Step four, profit. Step five, six, slash, triangle with two dots above it, and parentheses, uh, circle, and then dash to the right. Well, what is it? What rings you got, bitch? Uh, words like the, is, the, determiner, denoting one or more people or things already mentioned or assumed to be common knowledge. What's the matter? Used to point forward following quantifying or defining clause or phrase. That fuss that he made of her. Is verb used with he, she, it, and with singular nouns a form of the present tense. Indict indictive mood of be. He is trying to explain what is means. Wow, what would I assume to be hardest words to define without using those words in the definition and they did it? Huh, okay. Uh, Multidimensional arrays. It is really hard to explain it to someone who never programmed before. Also, if you have a good example, I'm ready to learn. Rooms full of filing cabinets. Variable A, B, C. A, the room. B, the filing cabinet. C, the drawers. I will give you feedback on it today, I'll help a friend, and if she does understand it, I'll tattoo your username on my penis. <laughs> Just have a really dumb friend. Cool, but make sure to use my full name, Mordis C00 Horatio Albert Stephen James Levine Milhouse Keeper Nick. Uh, I once had a friend from South Sudan. We hung out together and he learned English this way. One day, I used the word energy, and he asked me what it meant. I was such a basic and trivial thing to me, but to my dismay, I actually found it a little difficult to describe what it was. Love. For something so simple, for something so universal, it is still so difficult to really explain. I think it's so difficult to explain because it's something that usually takes people to put in entirely new levels of emotions, and emotions are already extremely difficult to explain. I was going to say love, but then most strong emotions are pretty hard to put into words, like loneliness or emptiness or fear or anger. That's why we have art and music, I guess. What is this thing called love? It won't hurt me, will it? <laughs> uh, it will be extremely painful. This definitely. When I was 19 and first dating my SO, showing my love to her was the expensive dates and presents. But four years later, it's baking her breakfast before she wakes up for work and warming her towel in the dryer before she gets out of the shower and spanking her. <laughs> I don't know how this gets more up than that. <laughs> That's Reddit for you. Which love? Romantic love. Where a person you meet by happenstance activates your entire life's response to happiness and circumvents enough of your program negative responses that exist around them generates enough meta happiness you need them in your life all the time. Okay, it looks like he was trying to say something that he knew what he was talking about. Uh, explaining how to pronounce a word is quite difficult. It should be relatively simple. Just repeat the noise I make. I teach English as a foreign language to primary elementary students and find that introducing concepts from phonautics can help. What's the difference between B and P? Well, one is voiced bill... Uh, wait, bill -o -b -all? While the other is unvoiced, Bill La uh, Bial. Bill La uh, Bial. Bial. What the fuck? Where is that? Bill La uh, Bial. I've never heard this word before in my life. Means making the sound with your two lips. Voiced meaning vibrating, moving your throat, while unvoiced means making the sound without vibrating your throat. Have the students hum. Tell them that's basically how to make a voice sound. Vowels are more difficult, so I often end up drawing a diagram on the board to help. B and P. B, P, B, P. Oh, okay. I guess I get it. They do sound kind of similar. Uh, this is a different question if we're talking about 4chan. That what language deaf people think in sign language? 
and more specifically which sign language they use. The same sign language regions of the brain light up regardless of whether you're using your mouth or your hands to speak. Why they're so stupid there. No. No. <laughs> I'm embarrassingly illiterate when it comes to finances, economics, business, so pretty much anything related to those things. It's okay. Most people in finance, economics, business are functionally illiterate as well. They're just really good at sounding like they're literate. This is true at the very highest level, particularly in the finance slash economic areas. Not only have there been brashly confident claims that almost destroyed the world economy, but we still have central tenets that entire industries are built around, which none of them could accurately explain from the basic principles. How to tie your shoes. Want to learn how to tie your shoes? It's a very easy thing to do. Just sit on your back and I'll give you a little scoop. What's that? It's called the loop-de-loop. -loop. Just take a lace in each hand, put it over and under again, just loop-de-loop -loop and pull, and your shoes are looking cool. Thanks, Gary. I'm sorry, all credit goes to Gary for this one. Fun fact, Ween wrote the song for the episode. I don't know who that is. Life Aboard Ships. I've been going to sea my entire life, and no one can understand why I do it. At least half the year, I'm away from my family in the middle of the ocean, and no one can grasp the fact that I love it out there. I could answer this. It is the euphoric feeling of coming home. You get it going to the ship, and you get it coming home. It's like the drug, but better. Take better drugs. <laughs> Defining the word the. Uh, that'd be pretty easy if you took any kind of snake at language class. Uh, offside rule in soccer. Man, this one is very frustrating when watching with someone who doesn't like soccer. Very difficult to explain. Much easier to show them examples during a game. But once you finally get them to understand the rule, it's always the same damn comment. Well, that's just stupid. <laughs> Uh, I don't even know what that is either. Offside rule in soccer. How's the water move through the pipe just by me opening up the valves? Is there a pump somewhere? Yes. And we're at a water plant. More than likely, it's all gravity fed depending on where you live. Water towers give it a boost as it goes through the system. They've torn down all the old water towers around here. Gotta be pumps, eh? To really confuse you, try a beer bong. Pumps make the pressure, but most of the time there's basically a big water balloon somewhere in the line to hold that pressure. Uh, the most correct answer here, qualia, qualia, I don't even know what that is, lol, it's the redness of red, the warmth of heat, the painfulness of pain, etc. So basically the actual quality that an arbitrary concept's magnitude would measure. Basically, the universe could exist where the sensation of red doesn't exist. I.e., you would behave exactly the same and be able to identify red, but the actual sensation of seeing red in your brain doesn't exist. In simple terms, the signal of seeing red. At the start, your eyes detect photons, etc., but at the end, something of the process you experience is sensation. That sensation is qualia. You could have an identical universe without qualia, that would behave and be exactly the same as this one, but no one would have the sensation of red as a sensation slash experience. Okay, that does sound really hard to explain. Uh, how your ask reddit questions can drop to zero, 50% upvoted, in the time it takes to post and hit F5. Edit, and have a thread upvoting for asking a question. Uh, I always have a hard time trying to explain the concept of learning a language without filtering it through your first language, even though it seems so simple. Irony. Irony. Writing a song called Isn't It Ironic? with a bunch of stories, none of which are ironic. <laughs> a knot. Left and right. Huh. Just make L sign with your hand. The one that looks like a regular is your left hand. The one that looks like a backwards L is your right, L for left. If you're Japanese, look at your palms. On the right hand, you have wrinkles that look like the te. The symbol makes the same noise as the one for hand in Japanese. I'm sure there are eminononics for other languages too. On your right hand? Oh, it does do that. Hmm. 
V looks up in XL. Easy to understand. Nightmare to explain. The bulk in baseball. The bulk. The bulk is really hard to understand. When a pitcher begins the pitching motion, the plate but does not complete it, maybe because they see someone stealing and decide to throw them out. It's a little more than that though. Once they are in position from which they start their motion, they cannot move their torso in any way except to start pitching motion. Or if they take their feet off the pitching rubber, so turning your shoulder to someone on first base is also a bulk. Hmm. Someone who watches lots of baseball animes. When they first said a bulk, I was like, what the fuck is that? Why do they get to walk a base? He was just throwing a fake throw to first base. How is that a free walk? Oh, but that's how it works. How to make tea properly. Especially if you're American. Jesus fuck, how hard can it be? And no, it doesn't go in the damn river before you say anything. <laughs> Who drinks tea? You're right, it doesn't go in the river, it goes in the harbor. Oh, here we go. <laughs> harbor. How do you make tea wrong? Each kind is a temperature that is recommended and set time for brewing. It isn't too hard. You make tea wrong by making tea when you could have made anything else. <laughs> if you have to offer me a variety of teas, then you're making wrong tea. There is only one tea. I think you're a very confused person. You can't get behind oolong, green, or white teas. I feel bad for you. What the British would call tea and what the rest of the world calls tea are two different things. You go into any coffee shop in the UK and ask for a cup of tea. You don't get given a sub menu asking what types of leaves you want. It's just one type. And it's always followed up by how much milk. Not do you want milk, as that's not a choice. Tea with milk, nothing else. Last time I was in Florida, I went into some indie coffee shop and asked for a tea, and they just looked at me blankly, and then gave me some oversweet yet sour tasting orange liquid. When I asked them for milk, they thought I was joking. It's tea. How can you get tea wrong? Just give me some Earl Grey brewed, but not stewed, in hot water in a cup with a splash of milk. God damn, I can kill for a tea right now. Well, if you want Earl Grey, then order an Earl Grey. Uh, I think this guy doesn't really understand how cultures work. Just because tea's like that in UK where you live, uh, uh, you do not expect the same thing to happen if you go to a different part of the world. He's just culturally retarded, I guess. Love for a family member, a spouse, or a child. That is a difficult emotion to articulate, but exists nonetheless. Reddit to the uninitiated. Love for a family member, spouse, or child. It's like the extension of yourself, but also separate people. And love for family members is also different based on cultures as well. It's funny that it's right after the this. There's this famous saying for no not saying it's like a famous question you ask people to really show people that uh, people from different cultures think differently if you would ask someone from a western country uh, you're in a flood and you're on a raft and you only have enough space to save one person and you have your child and your mother you know within reach and you can only grab one of them which one do you save the other one is going to die if you ask someone in the West, their answer will be, well, the child, of course. But if you ask someone in the Middle East or the East, they'll say, well, the mother, of course. And then you ask them, well, why would you say that? And the people in the Middle East or the you know, Asian countries will be like, well, you can always have another child, but you only have one mother. While in the West, it's, well, the kid still has his whole life ahead of him, but the mom has already lived their whole life. So, that's like a true thing you can ask anyone over there uh, family matters are a cultural thing uh, that's just what I thought it's like oh wow so people from different cultures uh, think way differently about stuff reddit to the uninitiated why I choose to chew on my fingernails why I love my girlfriend how the internet works how does the internet work? It's a bunch of electronic boxes that yellow location to other electronic boxes to the point that they all know where everything is. So if you ask one electronic box what is at some specific location, it knows because some other box yelled the location to them, which was yelled to them, which was yelled to them, and Noah zoom back to the source. 
what I do for a living. I can just be lazy and say computers. But when I say software consultant, they usually ask, oh, what software? And then there's really no way to explain what SAP is to them. So, uh, what's like the tree stuff? Bro, do you even T code? <laughs> what I do for a living, that's kind of hard for me to explain too. I make videos on the internet. Uh, oh, so you work with computers. Uh, yeah, I use a computer to do my job. I don't really know anything about how the computer works though. So if you have any kind of technical advice, uh, Google it, because that's what I'll do. And please don't ask me, because I don't want to be your tech person.